Yeah, look, over the last couple of years, it's been an incredibly difficult period for a number of grape growers and winemakers across Australia. Uh, China at the time was by far our biggest market. Uh, we were exporting upwards of $1.2 billion worth of wine each year to China at its peak. Today, uh, we're exporting just over $8 million worth of wine. So it's something like a 98 or a 99% reduction in that value over a couple of year period, which is an enormous shock to our sector. Uh, and that's been pretty difficult to deal with for grape growers and winemakers uh, in many parts of the country. And, and like you mentioned, obviously having to find other export markets, how successful has that been over the next couple of years? Because I would imagine that, you know, with potentially some of this good news, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get straight back to the $2 billion. No, that's, that's exactly right. So I think we, we are very mindful of the fact that the market in China has changed somewhat over the last couple of years. Of course, given the fact that we've been out of the market for a couple of years means that other producer nations have uh, been able to take some of that market share that we we had captured, uh, which is uh, understandable. But also uh, the Chinese market itself has changed. People are probably drinking a little bit less wine in terms of volume, and they're looking for more more value uh, in the in the sort of premium end of the segment. So that's part of uh, the reason that we need to really keep the focus on diversifying our market uh, access opportunities. We've been working very hard in regions like Southeast Asia, uh, Japan, and Korea as well. And in the long term, we're we're also doing a lot of work on India to try to see if we can uh, strengthen our, our trading ties there. But that's that's a, a challenging prospect. And, and that's long and I, I do want to touch on that in just a second. So then if we extrapolate this out, obviously there's been success in finding those other markets. But if we were to see all of the, the tariffs being abolished in the, the best possible scenario, zero tariffs on Australian wine, Australian grapes, is there enough capacity, because I would imagine you need excess capacity to then sell into China or sell and sell into these other areas, or are we going to go back to, you know, perhaps some of the, uh, the practices of the past where you can get that little bit of a premium over there in China, so we divert all of our wine there? So I think there's a couple of points that I make there. So firstly, uh, there's no single market or collection of markets that was able to replace what we lost in China. Um, we have been, in some instances, been able to uh, diversify and find new opportunities elsewhere. But uh, in reality, that has been a, a slow and challenging process for many businesses. And in Australia at the moment, we have uh, what I would refer to as an excess of, of wine, and particularly red wine, that was destined for China. So um, that is something that we are very mindful of. We need to keep looking for other markets around the world, of course, but uh, China will be an important part of the, 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 the future for us. The thing that we're also very mindful of, of course, is that um, while we were at a peak of $1.2 billion in export sales a couple of years ago, we're unlikely to get back to that figure. So we need to make sure that we are diversifying, finding opportunities where we can overseas and indeed here at home in Australia as well. Uh, of course. And how have the conversations been with, I suppose, your, your partners and, you know, your counterparts over there in China? Because I would imagine that, you know, we, we did see a, a lot of things that perhaps weren't supposed to be getting in, still getting into the country. But is there that demand? Because it, it might not be that $1.2 billion that you're talking about, but I've, I've got to imagine there would be substantive demand for Australian wine. This certainly is. So I, I was in Shanghai a couple of weeks ago. We met with the Chinese wine industry uh, while we were there, and those conversations were, were genuinely warm and welcoming, and it was a really good exchange. One of the things we talked about was the fact that for Australian wine producers, there, there is still a strong affinity with consumers in China. They love the product that we tend to make. We tend to have a, an ability to make uh, red wines, bigger red wines that the Chinese consumers have, have traditionally really enjoyed. That hasn't changed. The other thing that hasn't changed over a couple of years is the relationships that were built up with customers, with other retailers and other business partners in China. These things are built up over a couple of decades. They don't disappear in a, a couple of years. So those those industry to industry and business to business links are still there. There is some re-engagement to do, of course, though, over the next little while.